remember the, the last time when I was out shooting like this and bringing you guys along. It must have been more than, than three or four months. Definitely way too long. So yeah, let me explain you just a tiny little bit what was going on, what was happening to me. I would start at the beginning of uh, last year when I was full of energy, feeling motivated. I had plenty of ideas in my head. Um, so yeah, I was really, really productive at that time. I was writing blogs, I was making videos each week for you guys for months and months. And at the same time, I was also starting out my very own business. I don't know if I've ever started this story or not, but uh, before Corona started, my main source of income was from tourism, because we have a family tourist office in uh, Lake Blit. But yeah, we all know what, what happened to tourism when Corona came. Everything went to zero in a matter of basically overnight. Nobody was traveling anymore, so everybody had to find another way of earning money, another way of, of surviving, basically. But when I'm looking back to, to that situation now, I'm really grateful for everything that happened because um, I am strongly believe that that was my final push uh, it gave me the final push of courage to, to start my uh, very own business, to turn my love for dry plates into my, my everyday job. Uh, I, I finally, back then, I finally started uh, coding dry plates for others as well, not just for myself. And I also started designing and uh, making the required equipment for, for shooting dry plates. And so the Zebra brand was born. It was definitely a slow start, but as the months went by, I slowly started to coat more and more plates to the point where I coat, I don't know, a couple of hundred of plates per week. And I can, I'm happy to say that uh, this, is, this became my main job now. Yeah, back then I was, uh, when, my, when my business started to, to, to get better, I still kept on, um, kept on producing content for my blog and for YouTube channel. But then towards the end of the year in October, November and especially December when we all know what happens with, with, the, with, all the, with everybody buying gifts. I simply had so many orders that I had to... I was forced basically to, to uh, put my YouTube on the side a bit and also everything creative wise because I simply didn't have the energy, motivation or, or space in my mind to, th to think for anything else than, than what I have to do the next day. I was in my workshop full time. But even though I devoted all of my time solely to work, my uh, body was slowly running out of fuel both mentally and physically as well. My back started complaining because of all the forced posture. That, that's necessary in order to grind the plates, clean them and coat them. You're always like tucked in a, in, in a stranded position. So yeah, my, my back was, was making me trouble. So when uh, in the beginning of 2022, so in the beginning of this year, I was forced to, to stop with all activities for like two weeks or so. I mean... <laughs> Everybody who knows me would say that's impossible because I'm always, you know, always thinking of the next thing I have to do. I, I mean, my head is always busy of, 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 and full of plans. But yeah, I, 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 I was forced then to, to slow down, to not do anything for, for two weeks. But it, it, I mean, it, it did a lot of good for me. I found some help in the workshop so I'm not the only one doing the job anymore and uh, I also I'm happy to say that I finally found the time to to finish a long-term project of mine which I really wanted to to bring into life and uh, that is my uh, very own Ziba dry plate store which um, which I launched uh, a week or two weeks ago I uh, warmly invite you to check it out. There's a lot. It's not just a shop, but I my main goal is to for the site to become like a community or like a go-to site for everybody who would like to learn about dry plate photography and experience the magic of of it all. So um, 
yeah, there is lots of useful information on the site from uh, how to expose the plates, how to handle them, how to process them, their exposure guides that I made, their um, developing charts and so on, many many things. So I want to invite you to, to check it out and I also um, I would like you to, to leave a comment in the comment section below if uh, there is anything I missed, if there is anything that would be worth adding to, to the user manual. The last few months were definitely one of the hardest in my life. But hey, I'm finally out in this beautiful nature shooting zebra dry plates and uh, making a new video for you guys, which is what I always love to do. And today I'm gonna bring you along towards the top of a hill which is just about 1000 meters of elevation that uh, me and my girlfriend already visited uh, last week actually and when we were walking towards the top I noticed how beautiful this forest was it's uh, full of different plants and different species of trees and what overwhelmed me the most were the textures because nature really never runs out of, out of imagination and out of creativity so I said to myself, I have to come here and uh, take some beautiful shots and find some beautiful textures for you guys. So yeah, we will, we will start soon. Before we, we go, I would uh, like to thank everybody for your support, especially to my Patreons who have been supporting me through these hard times. Even though I haven't produced as much content as I would have liked for them, they still, still kept on supporting me each month and I hope that... Um, I could uh, repay your, your, um, your gratitude with the gifts that I send you um, in December. And the second thank you goes to, special thank you goes to Philip. You will know who you are. He actually sent me this mic as a, as a Christmas gift. And yeah, it will definitely come in handy as you can see. So thank you very much and uh, let's go. These are ravens, they're very big birds. When they fly by, you can hear their wings going like And they're also very loud as you can, you can probably hear them in the background. They have some gathering <laughs> right here today. It really got dull and cloudy, so obviously the ravens were gathering before the storm, huh? What do you think? Isn't it beautiful, this forest? It's a bit windy, but yeah. I kind of love wind as well in, in, a, in a way because it's, um, I always uh, take it as a uh, moving energy. So yeah, when there's wind, there is always lots of energy present in nature and all around. I better get going. It uh, really looks like it's gonna start to rain. Let me know in the comment section below why do you enjoy being in nature. If you uh, came across my channel, you probably are a nature lover and I'm very interested to hear what's, what's the thing you're, you're seeking for when you're out in nature. Whether it's just relaxation, fresh air, making photographs, yeah. Oh well, <laughs> now it became completely dull, like uh, contrast. 
went from pretty good to zero. My initial plan, like I told you already, was to capture some of those textures of the forest that I came across um, during my last visit of this hill in front of me. Uh, it would definitely be better to have some uh, sun out uh, so that the textures would pop out even more. But yeah, anyway, I'm not, I'm not uh, feeling too worried. I'm gonna continue on and right there in the background is the highest mountain range in Slovenia. It's currently behind the clouds, but yeah, these are the famous Julian Alps. Woohoo, the sun is back. Thank you, Int. <laughs> for bringing it back to me. I mean, like I told you, moving energy. Two minutes ago, it was completely cloudy and dull and now it's, we have blue skies and sun again. Yes. Let me continue and uh, find those textures I was talking about. This right here is uh, what I came here for. Let me take you a bit closer. This is a wild cherry tree. And uh, it has a very interesting texture of the bark. <laughs> My girlfriend the other day when we were walking past here, she said, oh look, this is, <laughs> This is your tree, this is zebra tree. And uh, yeah, it's in some ways it really reminds of the zebra stripes. The thing is that uh, not all of these uh, wild cherry trees have the same bark. This one, for example, has a grayish to dark bark and uh, quite dark stripes. But other trees inside this forest behind me here other, birch, uh, other uh, wild cherry trees have a much lighter bark and uh, dark stripes like this one as well. And uh, that offers a much better contrast, which is what I'm looking for. When I saw this tree the other day, I, uh, I, I had an idea immediately in my mind that I would like to make a shot of this tree. Surrounded with, um, with mostly birch trees and I really want to point this, uh, this texture and this tree out from the rest. <laughs> Quite a, a hard job, I think. So yeah, I better stand up and uh, go and uh, search for my tree. So yeah. This is kind of spooky. Nice to meet you, see ya. <laughs> mm. I think that after an hour of wandering along the forest searching for the right tree, I uh, finally found the one I would like to shoot. It's this one right here. He has really nice, super nice stripes actually. And it's also positioned in between the bird trees, which is what I, I said I wanted. Sun is on and off constantly because of the wind and the clouds. But yeah, I will, uh, Try to make a shot of this one and uh, we will see later on how successful I was. Whenever I'm uh, setting down my tripod, I always stand behind it just like my eyes are the lens to see the angles. I already have 
a vision in my head of uh, the composition depending of the, of the lens I'm using. So yeah, if the composition is not working for me, I simply do the same and just reposition my tripod and the camera accordingly. I definitely want to go higher, I think. Yeah, I think this is the best position I can get. There is another, um, I will show you later when I bring the camera here. There is another uh, white cherry tree behind, which I would, wouldn't like to have in my, in my frame. So I will cover it with, with my point of subject, the, the tree in the foreground. I'm just wondering whether I should step a bit closer or not. can try yeah I think closer is better I will just um, instead of lifting this bit I will lift I will extend my legs instead because it's really unstable that way Whole camera was shaking. Right, tighten everything down. I'm currently not in a rush since the sun is hiding. So I can take my time to, to get the composition the way I want. This is how everything looks from this side. You can see the, the tree right here. Let me show you underneath. Not much you can see, but yeah, this is the, the wild cherry tree and the, the two birch trees on each side and there are plenty more in the background as you can see the light is not the best right now so i think i'm gonna wait for the clouds to to move and for the sun to to shine i have to say that bringing this dark cloth this zebra dark cloth with me today was the, the best decision I've done because of this uh, elastic band it uh, can be nicely tightened around the camera so I don't have to worry about wind blowing the, the, the focusing cloth off and so on I don't really have good news because the, the winds are pushing the clouds more and more towards the sun so there is less and less light even after 20 minutes of waiting. So I've decided to, to um, still make the shot. I've just uh, metered my exposure time and uh, it should be one half of a second at ISO 2. But I've decided that I will uh, overexpose this shot for one stop. So I will uh, expose at one second at f5.6 because I think that a bit brighter brighter shot uh, should work better and should uh, emphasize the dark lines on the trees better. Time to insert the Zebra dual glass dry plate holder. You should always check that uh, your shutter is closed. 
like I said, I'm gonna expose for one second at uh, f5.6. We'll cock the shutter. I just realized I'm missing a cable release. Screw it in like this. Just check if everything works. The shutter is working. Currently the light conditions are a tiny bit different than the ones I meter, metered for. So I'm gonna wait for a few more seconds. I think I can already pull the dark sled out. Like this. I will just double check with my uh, phone meter, meter. If the conditions have changed or not. Yeah, right now it's a bit brighter. It's showing it's showing me one quarter of a second. So I'm I'm going to wait. While we are waiting for better conditions, I would uh, maybe I can discuss a potential future collaboration with Borut Peterlin. I know that many of you who are following my channel are also familiar with his work. He's a wonderful uh, wet plate photographer. I really admire his work. He's one of the best in his business, uh, in his craft. Um, so yeah, we are actually both Slovenians. Who would have wondered? I need around one and a half hour of driving to get to his place in, uh, in uh, Kočevje Woodlands. And yeah, we got in touch at the end of uh, 2021. But he's just as busy, if not even busier than me. So yeah, we had we, we discussed a bit, and uh, yeah, we we are both um, seeing uh, an, an option for for making a collaboration video. Um, <laughs> I think neither me or him can say when that's gonna happen. But yeah, maybe it already would have happened if. I uh, wasn't um, away from YouTube for, for so long with my bad health and all the orders I had. But yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that, especially because I think me and Borut are very like-minded. We uh, both are in love in nature. We love the peacefulness of nature and um, I think that we are we are both able to, to calm down, relax, connect with nature um, because that really opens so many doors for, for creativity. You start seeing things, you become one with your environment. So yeah, Borut, give me a call. <laughs> All right, the clouds kicked back in and the conditions are the way I uh, want them to be, the, the way I metered for earlier on. So what I metered was one half of a second and I will overexpose for one stop. So I've set my uh, shutter, my exposure to one second. Let me cock my shutter. My aperture is set to f5.6. I already pulled out my dark sli slide, so I'm ready to shoot. Let's go. Three, two, one. There you go. The exposure, the first exposure is done. I will uh, insert the dark slide now and uh, pack everything up. I think I will fast forward a bit because I have a feeling that this video is going to be plenty long anyway. <laughs> I definitely didn't expect for the video to be that long. It came to about 50 minutes in total. So I rather cut it into two parts because I thought to myself, who watches a 50 minute video on YouTube these days? Nobody, right? So there you go. Uh, I finished the first part with the end of the first exposure and in the second part, which will be uploaded at the same time next Wednesday. So at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. I will show you how I did the second exposure, how I processed the plates and uh, 
the two beautiful images I got. I'm really looking forward to showing you the results. So yeah, what should I say? Stay tuned as there is another uh, very interesting video coming up next week. If you enjoyed watching this one, please don't forget to smash that like button. And I'm always looking forward to your comments. So please leave them down in the comment section below. You can ask me anything you want or you can simply answer some of the questions that I uh, gave to you throughout the video. I would also warmly invite you to check out my brand new Zebra dry plate store where you can enter the magical world of dry plates. So yeah, that would be it. I would really like to thank you for watching. Stay safe and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye!